Hello and welcome back to the channel. Hello. We're going to share with you some interesting things in this vlog. We're going to tell you about the previous costs of the tour that we've just been on, the costs of booking the tour that's coming up next year, and we're going to answer some of the questions that you've asked us in the, some of the previous vlogs. And we're also going to tell you what we've been up to this week as well. Now, some of the questions are evergreens, but uh, we appreciate that more and more people are coming into the sector and uh, considering going to the Europe for the first time this year. So it's not to, not without understanding that these questions keep getting asked, but, but we're more than happy to keep repeating mm. the answers if it helps people. So we'll certainly pick that up. One of the first things we've done this week, though, is before we answer all those questions, is we've been to the light switch on at Holt. Here's some footage. And if you need a few little Christmas presents, you can always buy some gin. There are many highlights of the events here at Holt at the light switch on. And this is the pantomime, well, horse, camel, you name it. Basically, any pantomime type of animal that you can get is raced up and down the main street. There we go. <laughs> And they never fail to get everybody singing and dancing. This is happy music that we've picked for you tonight. about Holt. It's on the main A148 which links uh, Cromer and Kings Lynn. It's famous for its private school Greshams whose previous um, pupils include Benjamin Britten who was the composer, WH Auden the poet, Olivia Coleman the actress and also a Sir James Dyson who was known for being a little bit of an entrepreneur I think. A previous resident of Holt was also Sir Matthew Pinsent, the Olympic rower, whose father was the curate of the local church. And it's also got an independent department store called Baker's and Lana's, and it's been continuously owned by the Baker family since the 18th century. Yeah, it's worth a trip, actually. Any, it's any definitely time. worth it. Any time of the year, it's a really nice place to be with lots of independent shops. So our last trip which was to, to, to Germany and down to Lake Bled. Um, our fuel costs were 503 pounds and 63 pence. The campsites and Stellplatz totaled 397 pounds. The ferry was 466 pounds. The insurance was 164 pounds and tolls were 161 pounds. That gives us a total of just over 1,692 pounds. Now we mainly stayed on Stellplatz and one campsite at Lake Bled. And you can obviously upscale or downscale the level of the accommodation that you stay on, but we only stay on recognized parking areas or campsites. And we will put links to all that trip 
below so you can have a look at the uh, at both Germany and Lake Bled. Yeah, we, we had a lot of metered electric as well, so the costs mm. that we've given you didn't really include electric because we didn't always need it, but if you did need it, it was there, but you had to feed the meter, that was in Germany. Germany, yeah. There just isn't as yeah. many free, free sites in, in Germany as there are in, in, in France and Spain. Um, but of course, you get what you pay for. The mm. quality of the stale plasters mm. were on were excellent. Yeah, were very, very good. And they had everything as well, washing mm. machines, showers, everything you could possibly want on most of them. So yeah, yeah, they were very good. In total, mileage was 1,602 miles and 30 hours of driving. Yeah, all in, all in just less than a month. So mm. before we were banned and we had to come home. <laughs> this is how I had to explain that to somebody. <laughs> My sense of humour gets in the way sometimes. I mean, we've run out of days under the uh, Schengen scheme. We've uh, we've exceeded, or we've not exceeded, but we've got to the limit. Mm. So we're now recharging, ready for the next trip. Which brings me on nicely to the cost of the next trip, because yes. we've just booked our um, ferry and train uh, for that trip, as well as something else. We, we sort of, I've said before a couple of times, we always use the Caravan and Motorhome Club. We always price check, but again, this time they ended up being cheaper than booking anywhere else for us. And um, we booked a train out, and uh, that's from obviously from Foxton mm -hmm. to uh, Calais. And we're going to drive down through France, and it's, we're going to come back on the boat from Spain, from Bilbao, mm -hmm. in a, with a pet cabin, which is really the only way we could travel on a boat, uh, given that our dog is a lunatic. <laughs> By a cockapoo, they said. <laughs> It'll be great, they said. <laughs> She's marvellous, actually. We love it a bit. But realistically, <laughs> gets bored very, very quickly. Mm. Um, needs to be stimulated and um, needs to be uh, managed. It's fair yes. to say, isn't yes. it? Yes, yes. Yeah. So the costs for us um, going out with the train are £194.48. That's one way. And coming back, a whopping £735.50, <laughs> which seems a lot uh, on, on first glance. Uh, bear in mind, there's a cabin involved as well. But actually, when you actually break it down and you look at your fuel costs for driving back through France, tolls, um, I, know, I know you can avoid tolls, it's a personal choice, but usually by that time we need to get back. Uh, we've got vets to visit and we haven't, we're starting to get run our days up to the yes. line, so we don't yeah. really have the time to bimble back through France, so we choose to use the tolls. So that's, that's in itself, um, balances itself out, plus it's quite nice on the boat. If uh, we don't come down on the boat simply because I don't really fancy the bear biscuit in February. Not in February, um, no. So we'll happily come down through France, uh, but go back from Spain. Mm. And it, sits, it fits nicely with our route, which I'll tell you about in a minute. The other thing we've booked, we booked into a, a motorhome, caravan and motorhome club, European Rally, mm. at Camping Alania. Now, some of you might know this as Mahal Camping, which is what it was called when yes. we first started to go. But we've more or less been coming, going to this place since uh, 2017. Mm. We actually spent five months there in 2017 while we, we had a caravan then. And we went over there and it was a marvellous place to be. You could catch the train um, everywhere from there, Mercia and into Alicante, fast train to Madrid. Yeah. In fact, we Airbnb'd in Madrid. Yeah, we did into it, Madrid. It, it's yeah. a fabulous location. Yeah. But the reason why we drop in and out of there is simply that we've, we, because we've been there so often, we have got friends, European friends, who winter there all year. Mm. So it'll be nice to drop in there. I think we're there for 17 nights. Mm. Uh, the rest of the time we're roaming, which I'll, which I'll come to, but uh, we're looking forward to that. So, £1,218.98 on your credit card, thank you very much. <laughs> Bang, not very good for me as a Yorkshireman. <laughs> not something I particularly enjoy. But that's just, I suppose, when you sit and compare what it costs you to go yeah. on a plane somewhere, yeah. it's still reasonably good. It's good, and that was money. actually Martin gave you the total cost there, but the, t the cost of the rally itself for the 17 nights is £289, but yeah. there's plus your electric on top of that as well. Yeah, yeah. Dealing with that, then I'll show you. I'll talk to you a little bit about our route. Um, we really do plan our routes uh, these days because really it's around for photographic locations. Mm. And while some of these um, places I've been to have been before, I've got a new camera now, so there's a need to revisit with a new camera and uh, have another go at the different options for photography. So a couple of those have dropped in. We've got some new places as well, but this is our route. If you look at the uh, this, the schematic that I've put ahead. We're going to drive, start off on the east coast of Spain, head down that coastline, Barcelona, Valencia, down to uh, Campinolania. And then we're going to cut across to probably the only real area of Spain that we haven't fully explored. Yes. I mean, there's always yeah. somewhere you haven't been, isn't there? But the sort of Seville, mm. uh, Cordoba, Toledo, mm. Triangle. Um, we're going to hit that area for a while, explore that area. And then head across to Portugal because we've, we've because of um, as you know, we've, if you've watched us regularly, you know we're, we're regularly in Portugal. But um, we seem to have always missed out on Lisbon and Porto, which are yeah. great street photography locations. 
great cities to visit and um it's tend to be bad weather hasn't it it yeah, was flooding last, last time yeah we were due to visit last on our last tour and there was um i think it's lisbon's on about four or five rivers i know you'll correct me mm. if that's wrong and there was um, wide scale flooding so we had to divert a bit of a state of emergency yes so, there was yeah so we decided yeah. to this year to go across and, and try and do that and then we'll go up through braga and then we're going to head to santiago de compostela again which really uh, nostalgic reasons really mm. really meant a lot to us because we followed the camino trail last time we went there mm. and we feel as if we could do it in a couple of days to look around yes. there so we're going to yes. drop into there and then back through uh, northern spain leon into the basque country and on the boat home so it's a trip we're looking forward mm. to Spain still is, and Portugal for that matter, but Spain particularly for me is still my favourite European country. It's, it's one of those things, I get asked it quite a bit, but it's all about breaking down for, for categories overall. If you, if you scored countries for beauty, history, uh, welcome of the people, yes. food, cuisine, wine, etc., in my calculation, Spain would come first. Excellent value as well, I, I always find, yeah. in, in Spain. Yeah. yeah. As much as we love the other countries mm. as well, we're not, mm. but we particularly get excited about going yes. to Spain, don't we? Yeah. So the first question we've been asked is, which route do we choose to go down through France? That's an interesting question. The Weather-wise, because this is what it's about, mm. we're talking about winter time now, we're not talking about summer time. Weather-wise, without a doubt, the, 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 the safest route in terms of being able to get through um, would be down the west coast. Mm. Um, obviously off the boat, turn left, cut across around, if you're looking at a map of France, around the left-hand side of Paris and down. We don't necessarily mean go around the ring road of Paris. We've done that yes, on a Sunday and it was yeah. still quite busy. <laughs> I still recommend that you avoid Paris and yeah. go further left and down. And uh, and then uh, sort of head across down to uh, the Spanish border on, on the just south of Biritz. And then head across country, uh, Zaragoza, and across to the towards Barcelona mm. that way. But there are a couple of other routes available, and certainly for this one, because we want to start our tour in Girona, the most, the easiest, or the most direct route would be to go across and down the Massives, over, over um, the, uh, down Claremont Foreign and down mm -hmm. the middle. But that's quite high altitude-wise, and it's a risk weather-wise, so it'd have to be an exceptionally mild winter before I'd entertain that. But I might consider, again, depending on the weather's forecast, I might consider going across through Reims, which is going right around Paris, and down down to Avignon and, and in that way and that would be again a more sensible route in terms of starting it to uh, Girona but again it's going to be all about weather and, and that's what it comes down to if the weather is is cold you've got to bear in mind that on the Spanish French border you've got altitude and so there are uh, issues to consider with that and so I would suggest to you that I'm 80% sure we'll be going down the west coast yes yeah with, with a window to consider if the weather is mild. There's, we've seen some advanced weather forecasts that suggest the, the winter might be a mild one in Northern Europe mm. this year. We'll see. But if that's the case, I might consider it, mm. uh, particularly as we both drive the van so we can get through miles quite quickly so you know, before the weather can change. We can keep going. <laughs> but, uh, we don't have yeah. to stop as often, do yeah, we? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. The next question is, do we need winter tyres? Um, yeah, this is, this, like, we get asked this quite a lot. Um, I'll reference again an article to the French government site below, but, but you only need winter tyres if you don't have snow chains or snow socks. Um, I have snow chains, we have snow chains. Mm -hmm. The only reason why we haven't got winter tyres on so far is the van's tyres aren't yet ready for replacement. As soon as they're ready for replacement, mm -hmm. we'll put winter tyres on it. And uh, Poppy's just joined us with yes. a teddy bear. <laughs> a squeaky teddy bear. A teddy bear. <laughs> Could get interesting. Yeah, um, yeah so... Uh, you don't need that. Snow socks, I've always sort of avoided snow socks, but some people say they're good. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I would say about snow chains and snow socks is make sure you know how to put them on um, before you set off because mm -hmm. it's easy to buy them and think, right, I've got them, I'll put them in the boot. But then if you need them um, and putting them on then could be could be a little bit of a stressful thing if you're at the side of the road and it's really quite bad. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's worth doing. Yeah. And the next question is border controls or border checks and dealing with um, the local police force. Yeah, I get asked a lot about, about this. tends to fit two categories. One is, what's the likelihood of me able to get over a border without being checked for what I've got the contents of my boot on my oh, fridge? Oh, your fridge, yeah. Um, and the other one is, um, you know, what's, what's, what's the enforcement like of traffic law, speed limits, etc. Um, this is just our position on it, but, but we, we always regard ourselves as being guests in someone else's country, so mm -hmm. we, we tend to follow the rules. Um, in terms of risk, it's, it's a maths equation, it's a probability, um, really. You might find people saying, oh yeah, we've got through, we've never been checked, blah, blah, blah. 
Uh, and I get that, I do. Uh, but what the way it works with board of four sand all checks really is that is they don't check everyone. It's um, it's a ratio of checking maybe a one in a thousand, maybe one in two thousand. I don't know exactly what the number is. But ultimately, if you do it long enough, you will get checked. Mm. And then it's a question of whether you're prepared for the for the consequences of that. Um, now, as far, as far as traffic policing, it depends nation by nation, but you will see in Europe more traffic police than you do in the UK. Yeah. And certainly in France, the gendarmerie do enforce the traffic law quite a lot. Um, it's the same in Portugal. Um, the Garda Civil are the traffic police in, in Spain, um, and they're very visible and you see them. And uh, if you commit traffic offences in front of them, they, they obviously will deal with you. But the um, main thing I would say is that police services everywhere have the power of discretion. And my advice to you is, is don't give them an opportunity to forget that. Be polite, courteous and smile. And even if at the end of the day you get a ticket, ju just get on with life. Um, don't, don't get involved in arguments with, with uh, foreign police services. Mm. It's, a, it's a different ball game to dealing with the UK police. And um, yeah, but we've never had any trouble. So in fact, quite the opposite. We've always had positive... Yes, um, positive encounters. Encounters yeah. with, with police yeah. in, in Spain, France and, um, and Germany. Just human beings like mm. everybody else. And mm. we, we don't have any problems with them. It's a bit like... Come back to the probability of being stock checked um, and the people that say, well, we've never been stock checked, so it's all right. That's like a cat having nine lives that's used six of them and on the basis of that thinks they're always going to be okay. Ultimately, they're going to get to number nine. Mm. And, and that's, that's the way it is with stock checks and uh, things like weight and things, there is quite a bit. And the other thing as well is what we're seeing is more and more enforcement of unauthorised parking. Mm. In fact, we're reading the story today of somebody who was fined in Portugal, was it? Yeah, 120 euros in Portugal. For, um, for parking unauthorised. For parking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So just bear that in mind because it's not as legal as you might think in Europe. Um, usually, where it's where it's okay to park, it's authorised. There's a sign up saying it's on there. It's on park for nights or, or one of the others. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily have to be a, a paid one, but it just needs to be authorised. Mm. We'll just take a short break there and tell you about something else that we've done this week. And we went to the Wells Carnival or the Wells Christmas Tide. Shall we say Wells Next the Sea? Wells Next the Sea, not, not to, to be, be confused, confused with, with the other Wells near Glastonbury. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a town on the North Norfolk coast. Um, we won't go into too much detail about Wells because we've uh, done a couple of vlogs from there this year already where we stayed at Pinewoods, which is um, a fantastic motorhome site and also has got cabins and all sorts of other things so we'll put the link in there as well so you can view that if you want to as well but this is a great christmas carnival there is fireworks there's fairground rides food entertainment you name it you can do it at this carnival and also father christmas arrives by boat which is something that's quite interesting and um, we didn't stay all day because we had the dog with us and we wanted to get back before the fireworks but here's some footage <laughs> There's a song of love traveling afar. Sing to warm up
I hope you enjoyed the Wells Next to Sea video. It's um, one of our favourite places mm. all year round. Um, there's a number of ways to, to see Norfolk and it's very seasonal. Mm. So don't let winter caravan in or summer caravan in no. be a factor in whether you come across here because you can, you can see something different on every aspect mm. of it. But it's one of our favourite places, isn't it? It's fantastic. We'll put some links below. It is one of our most visited videos is the Wells one on mm. our channel. But I'll put the link below and you can find out a little bit more about where to stay and where we stayed, etc. from there. But of course, in wintertime, a lot of the uh, uh, sites are shut. Mm. You may have to book into a, um, a, a club site mm. and, and travel across. So the next question we've been asked is, how safe is it in Europe? Yeah, I get asked this a lot. Mm. I can see why. Um, literally, um, the problem with it is, of course, is if you troll YouTube, you'll, you'll see lots of videos that are done really for, to attract you to watch them, really, mm. with, with, with signs on that maybe make you think that there are some safety issues in Europe, but there really isn't. It's, it's, I personally feel safer in Europe mm. than I do in parts of the UK. Um, there are some basic rules that we follow, which I'll share with you, but really let me put your mind at rest. It's one of the safest things you'll do yes. is, is, travel, is travel abroad in, in your motorhome. Um, you know, it, it's like everything else really. You can't eradicate risk altogether, but, but I personally, and I know we, we feel quite safe. Very safe we? in Europe. But we, yeah. have, we have a few yeah. rules and yeah. I'll just sort of, I've already mentioned one, don't stay in unauthorised park ups. If you, if you do look, generally speaking, if people do have a problem, and it's, as I say, it's very rare, it's usually when the park's somewhere that's not in a, a recognised place. Um, with one exception, that's the motorway service areas in France. I can't say this enough really, don't spend the night mm. on the motorway in France. Um, there's quite mm. a bit of <clears throat> crime associated mm. with that. And it's, it's, you don't need to, there's plenty of options in France. If you're familiar with the Camping Car Parks Network, we always recommend that. Uh, but in any case, there are lots and lots of different mm. uh, areas to stay in France. The second thing for us is don't leave valuable things in the footwell of the van while you're mm. sleeping. Vehicles generally, if they get broken into in the night, it's extremely rare, I can't, I can't uh, mm. say that enough. Things, valuable things, most people aren't brave enough to come in your van, it'll be they'll, they'll open your door and uh, take things out of, your, out of the front of the, the, the vehicle itself. Now you might want to, some people put chains around and, and, and lock the doors, and it's a mute point whether this is a good thing or a bad mm. thing. Some people feel more secure with that. Others like to be able to drive away in the middle of the night mm. if, if they want to, and they don't necessarily want to be held up while they're undoing chains and things. It's up to you how you feel about that. Um, we personally uh, don't chain the doors up. Um, but again, it's not really, for any of the reason is that I don't feel particularly vulnerable. Mm. It's not that I think I have to, especially have to drive away in the middle of the night either. So. Again, it's a personal choice, but that's the deal. We don't. We, we take all the valuables, all the cameras, all the. We don't leave them in the footwells or in the front. They come into the back of the, the bus out of the way, or, or my camera bag I normally mm -hmm. stand in the washroom. So, just a basic, simple yes. security yeah. feature. The second one is when we go out, we always take high valuable things with us. Yeah, and the last thing really is not so much around something that people don't think about, but actually, unsecure Wi-Fi and cybercrime is still a threat to you when you're on the road. Yes. Probably yeah. more of a threat than being. Uh, stolen from actually so don't use uh, free Wi-Fi's um, if great if you've got a VPN we do have a VPN that gives you a private portal and we could technically speaking use the VPN with a free network but certainly for things like banking we only do that on apps on our phones and always through the SIM card of, of a major uh, supplier like mm. Vodafone or EE or, or somewhere like that because that's that's about as safe as, you, as safe as you can get I don't use a browser so if you open your laptop and use a browser on an unsecure network, you're very vulnerable for mm. somebody actually being able to access your banking details online or at least drop a phishing product onto your, onto your vehicle. So if you keep yourself safe that way. Yeah, and the last one, but he's probably actually thinking about it, there's one more, backpack rules. Yes. You are going to come into contact with opportunities criminal criminals while you're mm. out walking around busy places. So Rome, mm. Venice, Venice yeah. and Barcelona. Barcelona are the yeah. three that we yeah. noticed more potential for pickpocketing pocketing mm. and uh, so simple things don't put things in your back pocket yeah um, we, we carry backpacks we put things on inside zip packets on backpacks and yeah. when we're into the real busy places we turn the backpacks around and we have them yeah, so you can here wear them on your front so you can yeah. see see what's happening and the other thing as well is if you sit down for a meal and you put your bag on the floor that's a problem if mm. you're not careful mm. because you can be focused on what you're eating in the conversation looking around yeah. and somebody will just have your bag away yeah. and gone so I put wrap most... mine around my chair leg. Yeah. So I, yeah. I put it so it's tied around my chair leg so they can't remove it. Yeah. So next on the cards for us is Sandringham. Yes. We're going to we're going to head across to uh, Luminate. We, we we basically give you the heads up in the last video about mm -hmm. that. 
And so we'll be giving you some more information about Norfolk. And if there's any of the questions you want us to answer of our travels, then um, fire them into us. Uh, we're getting in the Christmas mood at this end now. Christmas spirit, our Christmas tree has gone up. Yes. And uh, as we've tended to be alternate away for Christmas, uh, we were away in Spain last year for Christmas yes. and, and home this year. We tend to make sure we enjoy it while we're here. Uh, but then as soon as we get uh, past Christmas, it'll be full-scale planning full for, the next, planning for the next trip. Yeah. And we'll start to do a series yeah. of videos and in a bit more detail mm -hmm. on that subject. So we hope that works for you, and we'll see you in the next one. Martin out. Helen out.